Hi, everybody. Up, oh, I am live. Hello, YouTube. Hello, Facebook. Hello, YouTube. Hello, hello. Hello, everybody. It's six o'clock. It is December 4th. Hey. <laughs> hello, 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 hello. Hope everybody is well. I hope everybody is nice. It is Monday, December 4th. I can't believe it. It's already December. It is the last month of 2023. And what can I say? We made it, y'all. We made it. Thank the Lord. It is 6 o'clock, 6.01 actually. And I am coming to you guys live today just to talk about my workshop. And I have one key topic I'm going to talk about today. I'm going to try to stay on topic. It's not going to be long. I'm actually going to wait a few minutes and let, um, let a couple more people jump on. I hope everybody is well. I hope everybody had a marvelous weekend. This weather is something. I don't know where everybody is um, watching me from, but I'm here in North Carolina, and this weather has been something. It felt kind of good outside today. Um, still needed a sweater, though. Still needed a sweater. But it's okay. I always tell people it's pneumonia weather. It's up and down. Have people sick. You don't even know what's going on. Trying to take some people out. Population control. <laughs> some people don't believe it, but it is what it is. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to give people a little bit more time to jump on, but I'm, um, I can go ahead and tell you guys what I'm going to talk about today. We're going to talk about um, a business plan and, of course, my salon success intensive four-day workshop and what you will gain by um, joining my workshop and how it will benefit you. Those of you who need or are, you know, in need of restructuring, in need of help building the clientele that can help you um, take some time off. That's what I'm here for. Hey, ladies, I see a couple of people trying to jump on. That's great. It's 6.03. I'm going to give y'all two. I'm giving them two more minutes. But how y'all doing? Hey, Pam. Hello, Aisha. I hope y'all had a good weekend. It's Monday. It's a new week. New opportunities, new time to make um, better decisions and, you know, grow from last week. It's a new week. Ooh. Lord Jesus. Everybody ready? Getting ready for Christmas? Getting ready for the holiday? Thanksgiving just just left, and we already moving on along. This time, time waits. One of my sayings I always tell people: time waits for no one, and I am no exception. <laughs> time waits on no one. So, with that said, it is six oh four, and you know, let me introduce myself for some of you guys who don't know who I am. My name is Nicole McCracken. I am a licensed stylist um, from behind the chair. I love being behind the chair. And I have been behind the chair for 20, who, 23 years now. I hold three state uh, stylist license. I'm licensed in North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia. And even though North Carolina is my primary residence, that's where I that's where I'm at most of the time, but you know. I do differ, you know, jump out here or there every now and then. So, um, but yeah, I'm a licensed stylist. I've been a licensed stylist for 23 years now. 
and I am a licensed educator for North Carolina. I have been a licensed educator for over 10 years now, and I give um, salon stylists um, hours so that, you know, you guys, so that we can keep our, our, keep our license up um, for North Carolina. So like I said, I'm a veteran in the game, 23 years behind the chair. I'm a licensed educator, 10 plus years now, and I am blessed and fortunate enough to be a salon owner. I am the owner and operator of Salon Kim Nico's located here in Monroe, North Carolina. We've been open for 17 years now and, and counting, and we love it. We love slaying these heads and making y'all beautiful. I love um, all the great comments that um, I get from clients that come into the salon and just compliment us on our atmosphere and how we operate things. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Hey, oh, we got some, some little messages coming in. Now, you guys, I'm going to try to uh, try to keep up with the messages and the comments, but, you know, I'm, I'm still new to this live thing now, so I might catch you after I get off so I can actually read it. <laughs> but I hope all of you guys are well. Hey, Shannon. Hey, Cuzzo. Thanks for jumping on, but... All right, it is 6.06. I'm not going to be all long today. I just want to briefly um, jump on and talk about um, business plans and why they are so important and why we as salon owners, why we need them and how um, how they can benefit us. All right, um, the importance of a, a business plan. First of all, I hope you guys know what a business plan is the key components that derive of a business plan and why we need them. When I first um, opened my salon, I, I, I took me a year to create my business plan. First of all, while I was working in another salon, um, I made it, you know, I finished Wingate. I went to a university here in Union County for business management. When I finished there in 04, I was like confused with what I wanted to do. Cause I thought maybe I was going to leave the area and just start over somewhere else. But I had already been here for four years when I graduated from Wingate. So I was like, it only made sense to stay here and, you know, build my business. Um, like I said, I had already worked in a salon here in Monroe for the whole four years I was here while I was in school. So I had built a quite a large clientele. So it just made sense. So when I finished in 04, I took my time and um, decided what type of salon I wanted to run. Like, what was it that um, geared me? Whether I wanted a, um, a booth runner salon or I wanted a commission salon or I wanted employees, you know, like what structure worked for me? And let me tell you, I talked to so many people. I talked to so many salon owners who have been in business for over five years at that time. I talked with um, other stylists who were, you know, been in the field for longer than I have been. And I got so much, um, let's see, I got good advice and bad advice. So <laughs> it was like, I tell everybody, take advice like a grain of salt. <laughs> you got, You need to be clear with what you want to do and go forth with it and make clear plans and go with it. So that's what I decided to do amongst all the advice that I was given. Um, this structure is going to be hard. This is more what we should be doing. You know, all of the different type of advice. So I pinpointed what I want to do, sat down, thought about it, prayed about it and went forth with it. And I, sat down and started creating a business plan. I, now, like I said, I was working in a salon um, while I was in school at Wingate University. And that in itself gave me, um, gave me a structure to look at and gave me a different avenue than what I was used to seeing. The type of salons that I was used to seeing in my hometown, and I'm not from Union County, I'm from another part of North Carolina near the water. 
Brunswick County and the salons that I was used to seeing was more um, more so booth rental salons. People come in, they had their own everything and, you know, they did their own anything and, you know, everybody just fend for themselves. Um, I know that was not the type of structure that I wanted, you know, no knocking everybody to each his own, um, but that didn't seem to be the avenue that I wanted to go into. Plus, I have been working as an employee in a chain salon, so it was like I kind of really liked that structure. So I kind of decided I wanted to merge them together, so to speak, and go that route. I wanted my stylist. I wanted, I wanted to look for people to work with me that was secure with who they were, and who were um, confident in their skills and confident in what they're doing. Like that is that's the type of people that I wanted to be working with. That's who I wanted to have in my business around me on a daily day basis, so that I didn't feel like I was. Um, holding someone's hand and, you know, um, babying them in a career that they chose. So, you know, that was, that was how I derived to the type of entity that I wanted that in alone helped me by working in the chain salon and having knowledge and working in the salon back in my hometown. So that helped me, you know, really pinpoint where I wanted. So, after I finished school, I sat down and I said, okay, I'm going to write this plan and I'm going to, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to knock it out. <laughs> and, you know, unfortunately, Lord willing, that's exactly what I did. I sat down, I researched the business plan, I researched the business plan for salons, I researched business plans for um, booth rental salons, for salons with employees, for, you know, um, salons with commission and a combination. I looked into all to see which worked for me. And I looked at how um, the chain salon that I was currently working in, how they um, structured their business. And that was one of the models that I emulated my model off of. So, you know, so for the business plan, I had to sit down and come up with um, my company summary, my executive summary, and my marketing analysis. And yeah, I did go to school for business administrations, but yet still, all of that was new to me. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know where to start. I just knew that I needed to research the key components for a business plan. And that is where, um, that is one of the uh, key topics that we touch on in my workshop. We dive deep into creating your plan, your six-figure blueprint that will set you apart, like each key component in the business plan is a key element for us, the business owner, to use at different phases in our in our business. Like um, if you're looking for funding and you're needing um, extra money for anything, like certain pieces of your business plan is what they look for. Your financial projection you know, how did you project your business would grow and sustain itself and develop? Like these are key things that, you know, not just investors, but um, people who looking that may want to partner up with you, you know, or even purchasers, people looking to, you know, purchase your, your establishment later on, if that's the avenue you decide to go to, like each key element in the business plan you utilize them at different phases in your business. Thanks, ladies. <laughs> hey, Shannon. Hey, Tip. Um, all right, look, I'm going to go. It's seven key components to a business plan. I'm going to touch each one of them just a little bit. All right. The first component, of course, I already touched on is the business summary. Um, when I first did my business plan, I waited to do my business summary towards the end after I completed all of my finances and all of my um, marketing strategy, I wanted to make sure when I um, when I came to the biz to summarize my business, I was clear with all aspects of my business. So I always tell people to save that as the last portion of your business plan, even though it is the very first 
phase that anybody who looks into your plan will see because that in itself should relate, should, you know, correlate every aspect of your business. Like somebody reading your um, business summary, they should be able to, they should be able to read that paragraph and have a clear idea of where your business started to where it's going and everything in between. So that's the business summary. The executive summary, um, the executive summary is like, is what lays out the structure of your business. Things that's included in the executive summary, that's where people find your mission statement and your vision statement, which tells um, the reader the values of your business and where you um, where you're going, where how you're going to relate, how you're going to derive your um, what it is that you want, your values, your key values for your business. That's what your mission and your vision statement does. And those are found in the executive summary, along with your operation um, structure, who works where, um, how things are going to um, correlate like how customers can find you, how you're going to keep up with your um, clientele and your staff. And all of those things are ooh, ooh, a little warm. All of those things are in your executive summary. And after the executive summary, the next part of your business plan is your marketing analysis. Um, and of course, it's exactly what it is. That's when you dive deep into your, your market, depending on the type of uh, business that you're in. We're in the beauty industry. So of course we're going to dig into um, the beauty industry, what's trending in the market, um, wherever your location is, what's going on directly um, across from you, what would affect your business in a closer vicinity. That's more your direct market. And then of course in this area, your demographic market, who you're looking for, who you're planning on, um, you know, targeting to service and who you're targeting as far as the type of client, type of stylist you're bringing in. Like all of that goes all up in the market because you have to market for your staff as well. You know, everybody, you're not just going to go get a building, open it up and say, hey, I'm open. Y'all come on. Even though it works for some people, not for everybody. <laughs> But you have to market to them as well. So and then you have to know who it is that you want to bring in. So that's a whole nother issue, but still under the market analysis section in your business plan. And what falls under the market analysis is your organizational structure. You know, exactly key point how your um, foundation, how your business is ran from who who's in charge when you're gone, who. Um, receives the money for products who um closes out the drawer if you're not there who does customers um complain to if there's no tissue in the bathroom you know certain issues like that and operational structures that is the section in your business plan where you lay everything out how many stylists will you have how many chairs are um, in your business, like how many shampoo bowls, you know, this, this section is where you are as clear and concise with your plan and your operational structure as you can be. Like I said, your business plan should be written to where anybody that picks it up could open it up, read it from beginning to end and have a clear understanding of your business. After the um, organizational sales, that's when you go into your funding requests. So, like, if you know that you you're wanting to request a um, hundred thousand or however many thousands of dollars that you feel like you need for your business, this will be the section in the business plan that you would put it in. Um, if you're, like I said, requesting funding, if you're looking for investors, if you're looking for uh, if your plans are to franchise your business, your salon later on um, in three to five years or two or however many, this will be the area where you would um, put that information so that anybody who's looking to invest or looking to purchase or just looking to add into your financial situation, that will be the section that they will go to 
in your business. And if you're looking for grants, if you're looking for, uh, like I said, any type of outsourcing funding, that section in your business plan will be the section that you will utilize and that they will go for. After your funding, um, it trickles down into your financial projection. And that is different than the funding um, portion of the business plan because your financial projection, that's where you go in and you look at the um, financial, like the finances for your business, all of your expenditures, what it took for you to um, create your business, what it takes for you to operate your business on a monthly basis, a daily basis, um, a weekly basis, <laughs> and of course, an annually basis. Like the financial section is a clear, drawn out, precise plan of all of the finances, money that, um, how your money come in, where your balance sheet, all of your financial um, statements and documents will be in this section in your business plan. That's where you would um, show verification of how you came up with your projection for your year plan, two-year plan, and three-year plan, where your numbers come from, um, where you got your percentages for your market analysis. This is the section for all finances. And then, of course, after the financial section, after you've hit all of those six, six key sections to your business plan, You'll end it with a summary and you'll summarize everything. That's where you will conclude what it is that you have been um, describing through the whole plan, what your business is for, the key values, how you um, how you uh, add value to the community. Um, oh, yeah, I forgot to tell you where your competition go. Your competition go into the organization plan, too. You'll talk about them as well in that section too, <laughs> because you'll see, you'll list their strengths and weaknesses. And then you'll compare yours, of course, to where you are, um, you know, where you're adding on. You have to show where you're adding on a benefit to the community, to the area that you're putting your business in and how you contribute. You know, all of that is all, all of that is derived in your business plan. And when you get to the end where you summarize, you want to make sure you end it with a good, um, a good sentence to let people know, to let the reader know that this is a highly valued entity that is going to be um, add value to whatever area you're entering in. So, um, like I said, so those are the key components of the business plan. Um, I went over the seven elements in a business plan, how um, the information that you put in each section now, I tell you what you can do with your business plan. I told you how you can use your financial section and your funding um, sections in the business plan to concretely lay out any um, money that you want to go for, any funding that you're needing to go for, and any financial um, avenue that your business is going in. And everything that I just discussed, we're dig deep <laughs> in my four-day workshop. Like the business plan is the key element to leaving out of my workshop. You will leave with a actionable plan that you can take and go forth for funding with your financial section, your financial um, strategies and your executive plan. Like with Salon Success Intensive Four Day Workshop, we dig deep so that you have a clear idea of where your business is um, and where you're trying to go. Like I said, I've been running Kim Nicole's for 17 years now, and I am proud and, you know, ecstatic to say that, you know, we, we just keep growing. We keep growing. Um, the pandemic of 2020 made a big difference for a lot of salons, um, a lot of salons that were thriving before the pandemic. Some didn't quite, some didn't make it over the pandemic. And I, I'm I'm blessed and just ecstatic to know that the structure that I spent a lot of time, a lot of sweat, a lot of tears <laughs> to put together has now um, allotted me time off. You know, I've been able to 
take all of November off. And, you know, I have some health issues going on, but thank the Lord I'm not stressed about, you know, my business and, you know, making sure that my clients are satisfied, my clients are happy, you know, like the structure that we got at Chemicals is phenomenal. And I may have created it, but it took my team, the people that, you know, we pin I pinpoint to bring in. They did their part and they're still doing their part. So, you know, I'm just trying to give what I got to someone else. So that's what that's what I'm here to do. So Salon Success Intensive Four Day Workshop is here to, you know, show you that you too can do it. And that's pretty much it. So you guys, just to recap. <laughs> The doors are open for my workshop. It opened December 1st. Now, my workshop is January 13th, but I am um, I only have 20 seats available. Like It is a small, intimate workshop because I want to make sure every participant, every salon owner gets every question answered and leave with a plan that they can implement tomorrow. So... Um, I'm going to get ready to jump off of here, but uh, I'm going to put the link in the comments for you guys, um, salon owners. If you're ready to elevate your business, if you're ready to transition what you have, if you want to be the leader that, you know, you, you know, you are, I know you are, if you created a salon and you open a salon, you, you dare to lead the pack. So, you know. It's, it's on us to step up and do what we need to do. So I'm going to put the link in the comments down below and schedule a call with me so we can get you on the call. Then we can secure your seat and we can, you know, turn your dream into your reality because I have. So I got to go. <laughs> it's getting late. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your evening. It is Monday, December 4th. And like I said, I love y'all and, you know, let's, let's do it. <laughs> All right, y'all. Talk to y'all later. I'll see y'all tomorrow, Tuesday, six o'clock, same time, same place. Have a good one. All right, you too. Y'all too. Have a good one.